All right, Uncle Sam FM here. This is episode 11 of my American football series. And this episode is titled State Supremacy because we will be facing our arch rivals, our state rivals, the Michigan Wolverines. Of course, if you've been following, I am with Michigan State University, the Spartans. And first of all, let's kind of pick up on where we left off. Let's talk about our the results we've had. So the last time, uh, the last episode... You guys saw a dramatic golden goal victory against Ohio State in our first Big Ten Conference game of the season. Since then, things have still been going pretty well. Um, we followed up with a win against Maryland at home, 3-0, to zero, and a pretty dominant performance. <clears throat> then we went to Indiana and got a win there, 2-0. to zero. Went out of the conference, played UC Riverside, and I started to face some fixture congestion. So for the match against Creighton, I, I don't want to say I underestimated them. I, I knew I can't our our team after last year. We really can't underestimate anyone. But I played what was essentially my third team. Um, I've I've got 22 guys that I, I rotate pretty regularly, and then I've got some guys on the bench who rarely ever see time. So I gave them that match against Creighton, and even though we mostly controlled the game, um, they finished better, and so we took a loss. It was a tough loss, two to one, but we we uh, we turned right around, went to Northwestern, and got a big conference win there, three to one, and then I actually played most of those same guys that lost to Creighton against Loyola Marymount, and they flipped the result. They actually finished better than LMU in that match. And in our last match, I got another dramatic golden goal victory against Rutgers. So now let's look at the uh, recruiting class. I did do a little recruiting since the last video. First of all, um, I signed Amanda Brown. Amanda Brown's still too young to play this season, but he will join next year. And it's kind of uh, odd for me to say, to use the male pronoun he with Amanda, but hey, it's 2019, right? We, we don't really do genders anymore. So, um, but Amanda was somebody my scouts found while looking around, poking around, and he has some very good attributes that fit our style of play, at least of most of the players that I've seen. So Amanda has 13 passing, he has 13 decisions, and 13 vision. I uh, would like to get his teamwork up and obviously his work rate. Those are areas that desperately need to improve for him to be able to play with us. But um, he looks looks like a decent prospect. So I did go ahead and sign him. I also added a player who came to me. His agent brought him to me. And uh, this is Antonio Moore. He's a left winger. He um, also has very good passing attributes, fits our style of play. Honestly, I, I wasn't going to take him because I, I don't, it's not entirely realistic for a player to transfer midseason. But um, I kind of justified it to myself by saying that other teams are going to do it in, in this game. So that's what I did. <clears throat> so, realistic or not, I added this player and he's going to be a big help. He's immediately going to start for me at left wing and he'll actually be getting his first start today. Um, as when we get to the Michigan match. Uh, another also quickly to look at our squad, a um, couple things that I, I've sort of noticed by looking at statistics. Uh, first of all is, is Kevin Del Campo. We'll highlight him. Del Campo and Johnson have kind of had this battle going for the right wing position. But as you can see, uh, right now Del Campo is outperforming Johnson. He um, higher average rating. He's got more goals. His goals per 90 is actually above one per match. So he averages more than a goal every match. Um, and he even has a couple of assists. So he's he's scoring and he's helping to create chances. And Johnson has a couple of assists, but he only has one goal. So probably I'm going to end up having to, to start Del Campo over Johnson with my first 11. Um, another real quick look, uh, left wing. I'm pretty happy with the way things have been going. Obviously, my starting wing today, Moore, is not, has yet to play. But Steve Weiss <clears throat> does have four assists, so he is creating chances. That's He leads the team in assists. 
And actually, second in assists is the, was the backup left wing, Ramon Candia, so, uh, who also has a couple goals. So getting a lot of production from the left wing and right wing when Johnson's playing. I'm sorry, when Del Campo is playing. One slight concern uh, up front is striker Ansel. He does have four goals, which is not terrible. I, I would like for that to be more. But he has zero assists, which, given his number of appearances, I, I would I would like for him to at least have one or two. But he's um, the reality is he's not really built for our style of play. He's he's just a scorer, and really he's a he's a counterattack scorer. He's somebody that you you want to hit on the break because he um, not a great hitter, um, but his pace is 15, so he's probably would make a better, I don't know, poacher type striker, but um, you know, he's still getting a few goals here and there, so we'll take it. He, um, I, hopefully I can develop him a little bit to where he's a better passer, better, um, better teammate on the, in the attack. So that's just a little thing to keep in mind as we look forward. Um, the R- River Dunwell, who is the backup striker, <clears throat> he's got three goals and he has an assist. So he's got the same goals per 90 rating as Marcus, but he, he's, he's also a better passer. So it may end up that I have to start River Dunwell when it kind of hits rubber meet the road time. So, um, But that's a quick look at the squad. And now let's look at our opponent, Michigan, the Wolverines. Michigan was, I've said this before in this series, <clears throat> I actually looked at at taking this job I, I applied for it but apparently I was too late uh, in the process to get the job but they are probably regretting their decision because they are not doing very well in the Big Ten they're not doing very well overall their team is very well it, their registered player list is very small but the, the man they ended up hiring Nicholas Darren I really don't know much about him he, um, look at his milestones. He came from Detroit Mercy, where, I don't know, I assume he had some success. Uh, runners up in the Horizon League, which is a smaller conference <clears throat> with smaller university college teams. So um, he's not been able to get very much done with Michigan in, in this, I think he's had two seasons there. He, uh, as you can tell, his squad is kind of small. He's got a lot of old guys and... This is an unfortunate reality with the AIs. They don't always know what to do with teams. Um, they don't understand the squad rules. And so they, so you've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players that are ineligible and will never be eligible. Um, that's even worse than what I had. When I took over Michigan State, I only had like four or five. And I cut them because that's natural. Like why keep a bunch of guys on the team who can't even play? I don't even understand why they why they haven't left themselves. Um, so that's the situation with Michigan uh, with their team. So they're <laughs> shorthanded, and the players they have are not very good. And that's kind of shown on the field. They've <clears throat> coming off of a loss at Maryland. Um, they do have, let's see, one win and one draw in conference play. Overall, they're three wins and three draws with seven losses. So Michigan is not doing very well. Now we can't, oh, we can't underestimate anybody, like I said. But um, I feel pretty good about my chances against Michigan today. Um, don't expect them to really to be too much of a challenge unless I can't finish you know crazy things happen that game against Creighton um, my center back who admittedly is a third team center back um, had a really terrible giveaway Creighton got the goal and I ended up losing the match I think they got their other second goal on a free kick so so things like that could happen and I could lose but um, I really I should should be able to win this game today and it is a big rivalry game um this is the Big Ten standings right now. I'm sitting atop with maximum points. <clears throat> um, probably, and, and the reality is, below me, all these teams are pretty balanced. Like especially like from from Rutgers to Maryland, there's not a great difference in quality. So um, then you get down to Michigan and Northwestern, and those teams don't really have very much. So I'm five points clear, and I actually have a game in hand on the second place team. Um, six points clear of Wisconsin, 
who I'm yet to play. So, um, so this is a big win. It's important to win the conference games. Um, winning this will just about kind of settle things because the most amount of points that Wisconsin could get if they won all three of their remaining matches would be 18. If I win the day against Michigan, then I'm at 18. Um, so I will just about guarantee myself the regular season title, which doesn't really do much. You get a trophy, so that's good. But it won't get me into the NCAA tournament. Um, so uh, the only guaranteed bid in the NCAA tournament is winning the conference tournament. So, But the reality is winning the Big Ten prob- regular season probably gets me in. So, um, so exciting game today. Let's go ahead and move to the live comp. All right, so here we go. Arch rivals, Michigan Wolverines at home at DeMartin Stadium. Big match, although to be fair, Michigan is a weaker team. We should get the win, but hey, it's a derby. It's a rivalry game, so you never know how these things are going to go, even when even uh, when one team might seem to be stronger. So let's give the pep talk. Uh, let's, let's do the whole relax thing. Yeah, they're obviously the weaker team here, but again, you can throw records out the window. It's one of the classic cliche sayings we have here in American sports. Uh, it is always a tremendous occasion. Uh, we're going to go out and attack. I always say that, even if it's not true. I don't know what effect it has. But I haven't really I changed anything from my typical default setup. I'm going to try and um, play them as I normally would, at least just to kind of see how things are going. Not much going on so far. They get a yellow card. Bryant with a free kick from the left. We're only in the second minute here, so this is good to get a second minute highlight with us with the ball. And there's third... And across from deep right, and the left winger can only put it over the line. <clears throat> to Cantu at the 18, into the danger zone. Cantu out to Bryant, and the Michigan defender puts it out. So we look to be in control again. This is what we expect, but... Oh, and we have a goal in the fifth minute. Antonio Moore less than five minutes into his Spartan career and he gets a goal gets us a goal that was a good a good signing <clears throat> and already on the kickoff we have a highlight yeah I mean I knew that we were the better team but I guess I don't know I, I kind of expected Michigan would put up a fight given that this is a derby match I don't know how you guys do with derby matches, rivalry games, whatever you want to call it. We, we, we call them rivalries here in the U.S. more than we call them derbies. But um, it, it, seemed, it always feels like the AI plays differently in a, in a rivalry, in a derby match. So I sometimes struggle to figure out the right formula. And in, in those uh, derbies and cup matches are kind of a tactical enigma for me. And I'll get the formation out of the way get it down here at least see if it'll yeah and we get another shot but nothing to show for it still one nothing lead is good don't really think i need to change anything yet um fitness wise i i have rotated all 30 of my players that i on my squad registration have at least one appearance. I think pretty much they all have at least two. I think I might have a goalkeeper who's only appeared once. Um, but all my field players have, have been on the field at least twice. So I, I, I rotate. I rotate my guys. I keep them fresh so that I can have an advantage in games like this where you look at Michigan's ratings over here. Yeah, that's they're in the 60s, 70s. I'm in the 80s, uh, 20, about a half hour in. So I'll take that, especially when we get it late into the match when I can bring even fresher legs on and kind of see things out. <clears throat> Michigan playing that, um, that sort of that empty bucket 4-4-1-1. One, one. 
the two DMs. Uh, I'm set up pretty well against that formation. I um, I have a, a six to try and you know to mark their ten, their number ten, their attacking midfielder, and it actually kind of helps me to pull them out of position with my center mids because my center mids sort of play in front of their defensive mids. So if, in my just from my observation, what ends up happening is my 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 ten and my eight get the ball. And both of their defensive mids can get pulled out, and that opens up space, um, especially for my number nine or my wingers coming in. So, so usually I don't worry too much about this formation, but I say that, and Michigan does have something going here. And they get a shot. It's off target, but that's not a great sign. But it does look like we're going to go into the half with a 1-0 lead. Kind of an uneventful. We had, you know, some things going on early, but I think Michigan probably has hunkered down a little bit. Oh, we have a ball to Ansel. This is the kind that he likes, but he can't put it away. Still one to nothing. Those are the balls that Ansel lives for. And across into the box that the keeper scoops up. And... Looks like we're going to go into the half there. One to nothing. So looking at the stats, they did have that one shot. It was a long shot that was off target, but, you know, slight cause for concern. Um, we had eight. Only three on target. Eight's not a great number. I've been putting up over 20. Um, but again, w when a team does hunker in like that, it, it, sometimes it is a struggle to break them down. And so Michigan seems to be pretty disciplined so far. I think what I'm going to do is go positive uh, in the second half. At least start that way. And they all re reacted well to that, so I don't really see any need to change anything there. And now we'll go to tactics, and I'm going to go to my 4-3-3 positive and see if we can't create something here. One thing about positive is it it um, ramps up my pressing urgency a little bit, which I I, uh, I don't know how you guys press. I I do press. I try to play with a press, but I use it with individual instructions. I have my front five. I put them on on press more, and I only use I only adjust my pressing urgency, my team instruction, with, with this positive version of my four three three and a header into the into the hands of the goalkeeper. <clears throat> and long throw to Johnson, whose shot is blocked. So far, so good with the tactic change. Might start subbing here in a minute just to keep fresh legs on the field. And I don't know oh, Garza gets a yellow card. That, I'll sub him. And I'm going to sub Brooks out and put in Caleb Wilson. Had an injury to Frank Jones. No, 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 it wasn't an injury. He got too many, uh, Frank Jones got too many yellow cards, so I had to start my other number 10, my backup number 10, uh, John Brooks, alongside Cantu. The thought was with two attacking, more attacking-minded players that in midfield, I would hopefully create a little more. That's not really worked out. I, I would have thought, I would have liked to have had another goal or two here. Johnson Ramirez the cross buys the corner so let's see if we can't get a goal here more to Johnson oh he had the man but he misplayed the ball misplayed the pass to Ramirez Johnson we need to get reorganized here Lenny Johnson to Daniel Johnson I think that's a sub I'm gonna make struggling to create so I'm gonna bring in Del Campo at right wing for the last, last at least 25 minutes. Um, I will sub out my other number 10. And I don't like doing this, but I'm going to take Lenny Johnson off. Just keep fresh legs. Nobody has really has very high ratings right now, so I don't feel bad taking any of these guys off. Campo, oh, look at that. I mean, you almost, Del, I put Del Campo in the game. And I don't know if he gets credit for an assist on that, but he should. His free kick careens off the bar right to Moore, who finishes it. And, you know, I mean, 
he, you, you can argue that uh, Del Campo didn't do anything very special there, but I mean, I put him in the game and he create I and mean, he something he does ends in a goal. A sequence he begins finishes with a goal. So yeah, I'm probably gonna put him back as my starting right winger. And I'm gonna take Ramirez off, bring in Cowling. And I feel pretty good about 2-0. Don't think Michigan's going to be able to create enough to win. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the rest of my guys. I'm going to leave more in. Maybe get that hat trick. Um, I'm going to bring in Kim. We'll just, we'll just go ahead and make most of the rest of my subs. Still have a couple guys on the bench that if I have an injury or something, I can bring in and play with the positions a little bit. Done well to a pot to a potu a potu. And I knew that wasn't gonna go well. I had my center back with the ball in the danger zone there. Martinez to Gallard. Martinez again. Let's get hit away from him. Let's reorganize. Set it up. Set it up. No reason to rush anything. Give up a stupid counterattack goal. Oh man, Kim draws a foul. And we'll just do a build up. Moore gets the ball in the wing, crosses it in to Del Campo, who can't put the finish on there, but still, well done. Dunwell attacks to Del Campo, back to Wilson, to Dunwell to Wilson, to Dunwell, back to Booth. Campo, see, this is a time where I really think about. In real life, I have my wingers set up pretty wide. I have them attacking that space out there that's wide open. And in FM, I haven't had great experience with that, but I see a sequence like that, and I want somebody out there. And Michigan gets somebody with a second yellow and a red. So we have a man advantage. Pot two to Cowling. Over to Gillard. Gillard. Oh, that's, that's the kind of giveaways that we can lose on. Ugh. That again is a, um, what that is, that's me trying to play a style of football that I don't have the players for. But I'm, I'm kind of insisting on it. <clears throat> Booth to Moore, to Del Campo, who puts, I guess that was a cross, but does not find anyone. Kim goes and gathers up the loose ball. All right, let's make something happen here. Let's do something for the viewers. Campo cuts in with a shot that forces a save from the keeper. I like having my, my um, I'm pretty sure I trained Del Campo with the player trait of cutting in from the right wing. If I've got a guy who can exclusive, who can only play on one wing or the other, I'll, I'll give them that trait to cut in from the wing. And what ends up happening is stuff like that. So we are moving towards the end. Looks like that's going to be wrapping it up here. We do have five minutes of stoppage. Tina is out to a pot two, to Wilson, to a pot two, to Cowling, crosses it in. Could not find anybody back to Kim. Kim leaves it for Gillard to Booth. Wilson. Cowling crosses it deep for Dunwell, and he heads it to the keeper. Yeah, 20 shots. Um, usually I do a little, a little I, I get a few more than that. And only seven on target. I prefer to have at least, at least over half, but... The good news is we controlled the match. Only gave up two shots. You know, had 72% possession. Um... You know, probably, probably should have got more out of this. You know, two nil wins, not, not as big a result as what this could have and probably should have been, but we will take it. Um, dressing room, happy with the way you played, and let's go back to East Lansing. So Wisconsin did win which means that I have yet to clinch the Big Ten regular season championship. Um, they see who did they beat? They beat Maryland two to one. 
So that means that uh, my match against them, uh, well, to end the season, might be for might be for all the marbles. Um, I'm pretty sure that the first tiebreaker is head to head, is uh, matches between teams. So, so I, I, that'll be one I might need to win. Wisconsin. Uh, let's see who they play. So their other Big Ten matches against Indiana, and Indiana's no pushover. I think I have to play. No, I did. I played Indiana already and got a win against them. But they're third place, so so Indiana could spoil things for Wisconsin. But if Wisconsin gets a win and I lose, then that could be a big game. Um, my next conference match is at Penn State, who um three and three in conference play so they'll you know they're again not a big pushover i said before that from two to seven these teams are all pretty balanced so they're they're all they're all good enough to get a win against me so um so yeah this could be an intense ending to the season but i tell you what i'll probably do is um i'll probably do my next episode at some point during the big 10 tournament um tournaments are always kind of fun so i might Maybe do the, if I make it to the final, do a live com there. But um, we'll go ahead and call that an episode. Again, end episode, the big win. Um, my first rivalry match against Michigan uh, ends at a 2 0 result. So um, very exciting. And I will see you guys next time. This is Uncle Sam signing off. <laughs>